Hi, I'm Karen from I Am Academy. I'm going to be joining you on the online prosperity show to talk to you about how you can write your book and how you can do it quickly and professionally and also why it's really important for you to write your book. So join us. I can't wait to speak to you. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the online prosperity show. And today I've brought you the book mix. Okay, not the book midwife, but the creative success <laughs> strategist, Karen. Karen, how are you doing, my love? I'm awesome. How are you? <laughs> Fantastic. I can see you're really excited to be on the show today. Absolutely. I mean, viewers, if you're watching this show right now, I think Ralph Waldo Emerson has said that if we encounter a person of rare intellect, you should um, ask them what books they read. But I think after watching this show today, you're going to uh, be thinking of this statement in a totally different way. If you encounter a person of rare intellect, you should ask them, what books have they written? So as an entrepreneur yourself or somebody who's really trying to gain authority or to be seen, heard in the noise that's happening either online or offline, if you don't have a book out there, I think you're just contributing to the noise. So you might be asking to yourself, um, I think I'm not good enough or how do I write a book? Or, you know, you might have a message that you want to share with your clients, your followers or the rest of the world. And you're, entrepreneur that really wants to stand out and have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. I think your credibility lies in you having a book. Right. So I can't speak for those that have written theirs because mine is not out yet, but Karen is going to be um, helping us, you know, figure out how um, it actually, or what it actually takes to put a book out there and, um, you know, the three methods that she utilizes to get a book out of people in 90 days, um, you know, um, through her academy, I Am Academy. Now, Karen, I could speak and speak and speak more about what it is that you do, but I suppose you're the right person to give this, um, you know, um, introduction about yourself. Tell us a little bit about who you are, Karen, and um, what it is that you help people with there. Awesome. Yeah, thank you so much. Firstly, so well said. Everything that you said then was just 100% spot on. So thank you so much. And thank you for having me on too. Very much appreciate it. So uh, I'm Academy. What we do, we're all about getting back to who you were meant to be before the world told you you couldn't. And the way we do that is we work specifically with entrepreneurs who are in that place where they're building a business and they need to get more authority or they need to build their brand and get more clarity on their business. And what I find a great way to do that is through storytelling and book writing. So creating a book, it's so much more than people think. It's not just about putting the information together and going, here, I have a book. It's about the journey of writing it. You learn so much about yourself in writing a book. And it's about also getting clarity on your own business, your why, which is so important your message, uh, your avatar, so your, your clients. There's so much clarity that comes from, as you would know, from writing things down. So when you put that into a book form, what you discover is that you've got so much more, so much more to share with the world than, than perhaps you even realized you have within you. Uh, so it's a fantastic journey. And I love working with entrepreneurs specifically because I find that entrepreneurs are those people who are, no longer doing what society tells them to. They're actually kind of digging a little bit deeper and they're getting back to their passion and their purpose. And that's, that's the people that I, I love working with. So, uh, yeah, does that, does that answer your question? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. I mean, obviously yeah. with your job being the creative success strategist, you will help people to actually, uh, birth their book out of them. Now, oh, yes. somebody might yes. just be thinking to themselves, um, who am I to put a book out there? And that's probably one of the biggest questions that you, you, you come across. Now, what, what, what are your words to somebody who's going through that uh, negative Sally talk in their head right now? Absolutely. Well, I actually did a, uh, I did a, a live Facebook recently and I actually asked people, what's the reason you're not writing your book right now? And that was one of the top responses. So the main responses I had was, I don't know how, who am I to do this? I don't know enough. Who would read it? 
And in answer to that question that you just asked, uh, so anyone who thinks, who am I to write it? I say, who are you to not share your message? Who are you to keep it to yourself? Because your message is so important and there's people out there waiting. If not you, who? So, I, yeah, and, and I think it's really, really important to realise that your message, any book that you write, your message is actually not about you. It's about helping the other, other people and who will actually read your message. So to keep it to yourself, it's kind of selfish. And I say, write your book and share it. And I think that for a lot of people, another thing that stops them is perfectionism. And it, it may not be an extreme level of perfectionism, but it may be that, that simple thing of, I don't know how to write or, um, you know, what if it's no good? What if it's crap? <laughs> what if it's this? What if it's that? The judgment and that fear comes in, which is completely normal. And what I say to that is, again, if you hold on to that message, no one's going to get the beauty of receiving it you could change one person's life and imagine this if you wrote a book and you changed one person's life wouldn't that be worth it absolutely absolutely because yeah. while you were while you're saying that karen i was actually thinking because everybody's life story can be of greater um commercial value than we could possibly ever think of because we're all here to make a difference. So if you're not putting your stuff out there, you literally, um, you know, short changing the world and, you know, yes. the rest of, or that person who could have benefited from that story in and of itself. Okay. And half of the time people already have what they want in life. So they buy people's stories. And if you're not putting a story out there, then obviously you're missing out on, um, um, you know, uh, what people could purchase. Now, the people that you help, Karen, um, when they come across to you, what state are they in and how do they leave after they've spoken to you after the 90 days? Great question. Actually, I did, um, I did an interview uh, just recently with one of the ladies that was in my first group. And I remember in the first, when, when I spoke to her uh, at the start of it, I said to her, you know, what, what are your plans? What do you want to do with this? Uh, how many books do you think that you might want to sell? And she said, oh, I'll just get one for me. And <laughs> I just, I'll just get the one for me because she was telling her story of, of moving, like literally it was a physical change, uh, as in location change, from Scotland to Australia. So she was talking about her journey from Scotland to Australia, but also alongside that, her uh, emotional, mental, and spiritual journey that she had during that same time frame. When she got to actually the final stage and the book was published, I came back to her and said, so how many copies are we printing? She said, I'm going to go with 50. I'm like, awesome. She sold out those 50 and has now ordered another 50 because people want her story so much. She was waiting. She's like, oh my God, are the other ones here yet? I'm so, I'm like, oh my, they're, they're on their way. They'll be here tomorrow. She's like, people are waiting. They're, they're paid. They're waiting for the book to turn up so I can get it in their hands. So for her, the change was phenomenal because it went from, I'm just going to write it to me, for me. And now she's actually created a tribe on Facebook and she's doing uh, like readings from her book and she's doing discussions of concepts from her book. And she's actually building the book into part of her business. And then another gentleman, um, David, his book, he came in and he said, I've got this thing where I don't know how to write. Like I was always told I was really bad at it. And so I worked with him a little bit and he's now creating a program on the back of his book. So he's built a whole program around it and he works with, um, what he's doing is fantastic. He's working with young actors, uh, to, to help them build a career rather than being in that space of I want to be a star, actually building a robust career in the, uh, in the world of performance. So, so the changes that I see in people is, is dramatic for not only them, but also their businesses, which is very cool. And for myself too. Absolutely. Because once uh, somebody starts reading a book, it's like having a conversation and they're sitting on the other end and they're listening to your insights. And I've also noticed as we are going into this whole, um, you know, content era where a lot of people are putting stuff out there on, on online, 
some people can easily copy and paste a status and claim to be an expert. But if you're yeah. actually holding something that somebody has written, put in their heart and soul inside, yeah. that actually makes it um, you know, tangible that this person actually knows what they're talking about. So, And I'll show you, that's just some of the guys that I've helped actually do their books. So, so yeah, to have that, that tangible, you're exactly right. To have this is it's instant authority and it can't be taken away <laughs> it's it's very cool um and and i do my own book uh during the 90 day challenge that i do with guys uh, so they're actually doing it and i do my own book at the same time as well so i i kind of love that because i'm an author at heart so i get to kind of you know in my workspace i'm constantly doing everything that i love which is just uh, i think if you can do that you've, you've nailed life <laughs> Absolutely. I've heard that um, there's an infectious uh, side to writing books, which is more like yes. the people that are getting tattoos. The more you put yes. one out there, uh, you know, the yes. more you want to have one. So I've got a designated yes. shelf space for all the books that I'm going to write. You can't see it now, <laughs> but there's <laughs> a space for all the books that I'm going to write. How many have you written so far there, Karen? I've written, and it's funny, I just want to kind of address that before I go into my ones. Um, so the guys that have gone through the, the program so far, that's the same thing that's happened. The one that I said before that was just going to get a book for herself, she's like, oh my God, Karen, I don't know you, what you've done to me, but I, I, just, I just want to write more. I'm like, well, let's do it. And uh, a girl that's actually doing the program at the moment, she said, I think I've decided to be an author. I think I've decided to actually be a writer and make that my career. I'm like, where did that come from? So it's, it's, it's absolutely addictive. But um, these are the ones I've done. Is that all of them? There is one missing, but that's okay. So these are, these are mine. This is, my, uh, this is my first novel that I did quite a few years ago. Uh, this was one I did in the last, excuse the language on that, um, <laughs> in the last uh, 90 day program. Uh, another, this is just a little one that I've done, poetry book. So I've done a few different things and I've got another one that's, um, uh, this one, sorry, is the anthology. So I'm in that as well. And I've got another one that's coming out in the next week as well, which is a, it's a, it, it's basically the program that I run. So it's, uh, it's a introduction to the program. It's all about why. And, and a little bit of the how as well. So uh, that's going to be out uh, by the end of the year. Absolutely. Well, that is really phenomenal. And um, if you are actually using the book either as a business card or as an introduction to, you know, getting people to know, like, and trust you, it makes a whole um, lot easier than the people that are online just shouting, look at me, look at me. You can just pass a book and people can read or consume your content in their own spare time. Right, yeah. so at the end of the day, um, you have mentioned that you know fear really is one thing that's stopping um, a lot of people dead in their tracks and then, then they come back, come you know, rejuvenated with the, with the whole journey um, you know, that you take them through. In the 90 days, it, what sort of help um, are you giving people as they um, go along because it's not easy to yeah. just say, don't be afraid, go right. Yeah. <laughs> it's got to be techniques that you yeah. use. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I, the, the main way that we combat the fear, because the fear comes from fear of judgment and fear of not knowing. So the fear of judgment that we can deal with through coaching. Uh, however, I don't focus on that too heavily. I, I tend to, I like to drop a few little lines here and there. And if I notice someone's having a huge issue, I'll go into that with them and we'll do that one-on-one. -on -one. Overall though, the main thing is the fear. It's really the not knowing. It's the not knowing what to do next because a lot of people will go, okay, so I want to write a book. That's what it looks like. And they don't think about all the little steps in between. So they think I can just sit down and write. And the problem is when you do that, you stop and think because you'll start writing and go, okay, what do I want to write now? Mm, okay. I don't know. I'll go and procrastinate and think about it. <laughs> so what we do is we remove the thinking during the writing. And the way we do that is we get complete clarity on intentions, purpose, benchmarks, structure to actually create a, a, a really clear structure before you even start writing. 
So we make it so that when you get to the writing, you can stop thinking and you can let your message come completely from your heart and do what we call a word purge. And in, in, the, in the, uh, the fictional world, because obviously I, I do fictional writing as well, from the fictional world, they call it word vomit. <laughs> so it's the, uh, it's the vomit copy. I don't like that term, so I call it word purge in, in the Right Now program. But it's the same thing. It's literally just getting it out because a lot of people think I'll write it and this is how it's supposed to be the first time I write it. They don't realize that you're looking at three, five, 15 drafts before you actually get to this. And in our program, we aim for five drafts. So the first draft is literally words and it's all from here. And if you want, because we've got that structure in place, we've done the research and everything before we start writing. So the writing comes out so quickly that at the end of it, the next part of the program, because uh, I have a seven step, uh, seven step program. So the next part of the program is literally called WTF. Because once you've done the word purge, you look at it and go, WTF just happened. Like what just happened? And so then we go back and we start cleaning it up and the brain is allowed to get a little bit more involved. So what we do is remove that not knowing by doing those steps really clearly. And when people say, what about this? I usually say, it'll be taken care of. What about this? We're not up to that yet. Worry about it when we get there. And I think this is true for a lot of people in life in general. We're so busy thinking about what about this step over here when all we need to worry about is this step here. Just do this step first. Do this step. Then do the next step. Then do the next step. Because the other step is so far away that by the time you get to that step, it's going to look a lot different than you're thinking. And that's yes. the other thing to be not attached to the outcome because the growth that they have in 90 days is so much that the perceived outcome is not possibly going to be the same as the real outcome. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because people need to find out their end result in order for them to, um, you know, yeah. feel the fear and do it anyway. And, Absolutely. um, you know, do you have any really, really exciting stories either of yourself or the people that you've helped in the 90 day story? Uh, I mean, a 90 day program after having written their books, we say something that was dramatic that either changed their life, changed their business or the status quo around them um, or the things that were around them that they never thought were possible before they had written that book. Absolutely. So perfect example is this one here. This is Giselle Munoz. <laughs> I always have to be careful when I say her name. She took her a while to teach me that, Munoz. Uh, and her book is How I Overcame the Fear of Driving. So when she, the reason she wrote this book is she did a YouTube video and it was about uh, having a fear of driving. And she had so many hits that she went, wow, I'm not the only one that, that felt this way. And so based on that, she said, okay, I want to write this book. So she wrote, she put this book together. It's a little handbook so it can specifically sit in the, the door of the car. So she has now, from doing this, she's had clients coming to her left, right and center. And so she's now specifically a coach for in, in fear. So she coaches people around overcoming fear. So if I have someone in my, that comes to me to write a book and they're really stuck in fear, I've got someone I can actually refer them to. And, and that's what I love doing too. I love keeping all of my authors um, together in that regard. So when somebody brings something awesome, I want to I wanna help them. I want to help them build that. But her business now has been really niched and focused because of that experience. Absolutely. And I think that's what everybody else is looking at there. Instead of just spraying and praying with their marketing, if you put a book out there, um, you know, people would then get to know, like, and trust you and really treat you like an authority. I remember I Absolutely. interviewed a guy who's a garlic bread expert just because he writes books about food. So you can imagine he's been interviewed on TV and also on our show just regarding what it is that he's now doing. So it is easy it. to actually niche down your book right there and um, put it uh, so that people can actually, um, you know, get a hold of you. And speaking engagements as well can come yes. out of that because now you are perceived as an authority. Now, um, 
current. Obviously, maybe somebody's sitting at the edge of their chair right now and is really, really ready to um, start off because it's 2018 and there's going to be a lot of resolutions yeah. that are going to be written. And then maybe one of them is to actually put a book out there. I'm not going to name any names. I don't know people that are <laughs> in that position, but you know, it could be somebody who's out there. What's the best way that people can get a hold of you there, Karen? Absolutely. Head on over to my website, iamacademy.com.au. Nice and easy. And I've actually got something free on there for you. So if you go onto that website and you click on resources, there's a little PDF on there and it is called right now. Uh, and it, it's, it's a, so it's actually an introduction to the book that I'm writing at the moment, which is an introduction to the program. So it's the seven steps and it's a really quick breakdown of this is what you need to consider. So if you're someone that can take those seven steps and run with it, rock on. Uh, if you need further information, then obviously you take the next step, you get the book and then move into the program. Um, what I do recommend is that you get a mentor. Uh, I think that's the most important thing. It's like anything at all. If you haven't done it before and you don't know the next step, get a mentor. They're the ones that are going to give you that next step and that next step. Don't worry about the steps over here. Your mentor knows what they are, but they're not going to give them to you. And that's great. That's what you want. You want just those next steps. So anyone who wants to get in touch with me, jump onto the website, iamacademy.com.au. Uh, and you can email me at karen at iamacademy.com.au. And also jump on Facebook. I'm on there as well under I Am Academy AUS. Uh, so you can jump on there and have a look. You can see some of the uh, interviews that we've done and uh, some of the other little bits and pieces on there as well. Absolutely. I will make sure that um, all that information is in our case notes uh, or in the notes right at the bottom there so that people will definitely take advantage. And thank you so much for offering that uh, freebie there, um, okay. you know, because some people might just be, you know, wondering how they can really, really get to fast track and yeah. know what it is that you do. Now, like I mentioned earlier on, I mean, it's getting close to the beginning of the year and uh, this is probably going to be one of the last interviews that we have what sort of last words have you got to that person who's been procrastinating uh say maybe from march or february last year and has the program or has things lined up for them to put a book out there but they haven't really brought themselves um you know to yeah. do it um have you got any any last words for them i would say there's there's only one reason to not write your book and that is that you don't want to. And if you don't want to rock on good stuff for any other reason, you've got no reason to not sit down and start doing it. Now, if you can allocate five minutes a day, just five minutes a day and start, you will get a book done five minutes a day. You'll get a book done. And imagine this, if you wrote one page a day and one page a day, we're looking at 300 words, nothing one page a day, and you wrote for a whole year, 356 pages. Like that's crazy, right? Absolutely. I don't absolutely. even know my numbers. <laughs> yeah, no, but yeah, you, you're absolutely right. Yeah. And so I, I come back to what we were saying before too. What's the message and who needs your message? And if that person's waiting for your message right now, how much longer are you going to make them wait? That's really what I would say. Because it's actually the fear and everything. That's all. That's all. Of, you know, we've all got that. We're all humans. But it's the fear is going to hold you back from helping others. That's, that's, don't do that. Don't do that to other people. Don't do that to yourself. And imagine that book that you read that changed your life. What if that person hadn't written that book? Just Absolutely. imagine that. Yeah. Yeah. So change change somebody's life words are words are magical words are so powerful and get a mentor and get it done because you can do it everyone can do it we all we write emails we write sms's we write um you know we might write uh business letters whatever we can all write i i have no no doubt about that um and i actually know a guy who he's in a wheelchair and he he's actually a quadriplegic and he has a, a he has a strap around his head and he has a a, um, a thing coming off it with a, a ball on the end he types with that so i i <laughs> yeah i kind of argue with anyone that says that they that they can't write i'm like well you can so it's just will you 
Absolutely. You just reminded me of, I think his name is Nick Vilicic, is it? He also lost his limbs. And um, yeah, he's put out a lot of books out there and he's a motivational speaker and all. So I'm going to pack my excuse of having English not my first language and I'm going to throw it away because I was holding on to that. English is not her first language. You have disarmed me with everything you've got right there. So thank you so much for being the voice of reason and actually um, your time on the episode today because, um, you know, it's people like you that actually, uh, you know, shake people up, you know, and, and get them to be, do and have, um, you know, something of not some authority and especially a business that's profitable and enjoyable. I can't thank you enough for your time on the show today, Karen. Thank you. Thank you. It's been an absolute joy, absolute pleasure to be on here. Absolutely honoured to be a part of this. And, uh, yeah, I, I just I do hope that people get their messages out there because that's really what it's all about. Absolutely. We'll make sure that this message will be heard too. And thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. Absolutely.